So today as we are here, if we are <coughs> here to surrender our life to God, he is going to do something new. And he will never condemn us. Look at David the king. Who was he? He committed adultery. He committed murder. Thinking that nobody can find it. But God found him. God found him. He committed idolatry. He broke all commandments. He killed a man. Can anyone accept somebody who, who is a murderer, an adulterer, and an idolater? Jesus took him back. Why? Psalm 51, 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. He made a prayer of repentance. He was restored. He was never being rejected. So always look at our God. If you surrender your life to God, it's an honor. It's a privilege. He can do something new in your life. It's, it is never late. It is never late. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And if we surrender our life to the Lord, He will do something new. From that day. From that day. I have an experience. And this was, I had a retreat in Spain. This was in Barcelona. While I was in Rome, I was sent for this retreat. From Italy, I was going to Rome. I was going to Spain. So this was the first time I was going to Spain, to Barcelona. And as you know, in Spain, they only speak Spanish. And I don't know the language. So while I was going, I forgot because it was the Augustinian contemplative nuns who invited me for their retreat, annual retreat. So I was going to help them. But I forgot to carry uh, my, uh, I forgot to carry even my phone number of the sisters. I had the phone, but I forgot because the sisters who booked my ticket. And I was busy, so because the sisters booked my ticket, I thought they will be there in time. Everything is order. But it's when I landed in Spain, I came to know that nobody is there to pick me. I landed in the airport, but nobody is coming to pick me, and I forgot to carry their phone number. And I have no one there, and they only speak Spanish, and I did not even carry enough money, because I thought I just come for the retreat, because I booked the ticket, I will go back. And but for the sisters, they are contemplative sisters. So they are the ones who book the ticket. And nobody is coming. So I was thinking, blaming myself. Why did why I was so careless? Uh, at least I could carry some money. Because if I have to book my ticket back, it will be another expense. And I can't stay anywhere. So I was just keep on thinking and disturbed. Then I thought. I always advise people too much. When you are disturbed, pray. You are not supposed to blame. So then I came to NCC to advise. It's very difficult to practice. Then I started to pray for these sisters, just sitting, waiting. Everybody who came with my flight, same flight, they have all gone. Somebody came to pick them. More than one, one and a half hours passed. And then, I don't know what to do, where to go. Then... Somebody came, very tall, huge man, like from Spain. He came and he asked me, are you Shibu Sebastian? You know, that is my passport name. This name is not in, I'm not Father Anton in my document. Because in India, they don't issue uh, name, passport in the Christian name. They only issue it in our school name. So he asked me this. I said, yes. Then he asked me, uh, are you from Nindapara? That's the place I am born. I said, yes. Because these are the details in my passport. And I had sent my passport to the sisters. So that's the way they booked my ticket. So I'm thinking, sister has sent somebody to pick me. So then this person said, so you are born in Kerala? I said, yes, I am born in Kerala. Then he asked me, looking into my eyes. So, <coughs> Shibu, that is my pet name. My name in the certificate. So Shibu... 
you broke your hand twice. You broke your hand twice. I looked. He disappeared. He disappeared. Then I came to know it was Christ. As I am in that confusion, my sister is coming, running from far. She is running. They can't even walk with that dress, heavy dress. And she is running. She saw me because I'm on my collar shirt. So she came running, apologizing me. Father, we are late. We are condemnatives. We don't use cell phone. We have only landline. We tried to contact you. The phone was not working because my phone is Italian. It will not work in Spain. And she said, Father, because we don't go to airport, we called a driver. He did not know this airport. He did not know where to park. We came early to pick you. But we are roaming and roaming and roaming. We are very sorry. I told this sister, please don't say sorry. Thank you for coming late. <laughs> That's why I had an encounter with Christ. What Jesus told me in Barcelona, my son, I'm around. I know you. I know who you are. Even your pet name, I know. I know you broke your hand twice. Why it is so significant? Nobody knows I broke my hand twice. Nobody knows. And that was the most painful incident in my life. I broke my hand and it was on plasters. I was in the seminary. It was in plasters. So with this plaster, I fell once again. So the plaster also broke and my hand also <coughs> broke once again. So the father told me, you come to destroy <coughs> the money of the congregation. You know, they have to spend money on me because of this. When you are a seminarian, you feel so hurt when they say something. But I have forgiven all this. But Jesus heard it. He noticed it. And he is telling, I know who you are. Everything. Even when you fell down. Who saw that? That's why Sirach 23, 19. The eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. When your husband said something that pierced your heart, do you think God did not know this? Of course. But if you have reacted, you have spoiled everything. But when you keep quiet, when you are insulted, when you are hurt, then you get that great reward from God. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a great honor to give your life to Christ. He will never disappoint you. And he is around. Because we read in Psalm 24, 1. Psalm 24, 1. The earth and everything in the earth belongs to God. You can repeat after me this word of God. This is Psalm. This is a very important scripture. 24, 1. <coughs> <coughs> the earth is the Lord's. And all that is in it. The world and those who live in it. The earth is the Lord's. And all that is in it. The world and those who live in it. The earth is the Lord's. And all that is in it. The world, the world and those who live in it, and those who live in it. believe Rwanda belongs to God. Rwanda, the land of Rwanda is a private property of God. Even before we were born, Rwandis are here. Even before you were born, Christ was here. Do you know that? We are just transit passengers. Every human being. But God 
is the same yesterday today and for our he knows everything so we don't want to be afraid in any culture any country any society any situation anywhere because the earth is created by god dominated by god owned by god the title deed of every land belongs to whom belongs to god to give our life into the hands of god into the feet of god saint ignatius of loyola in the morning we prayed this beautiful prayer a prayer of surrender he said lord i surrender my liberty my understanding my heart my mind my freedom you do it the way you like because he knew if god takes over his life his life is going to be transformed as we start this in a healing retreat the first step surrender yourself to him and know to whom you are surrendering your life to the king of kings to the lord of lords to the prince of peace to the great i am to the great high priest to the bread of life to the word made flesh to the word of life to christ the alpha the omega only stand being all to jesus i surrender all to the my i f